Hey, good morning, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, thank you guys for watching, commenting, and subscribing to the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, this literally does not work. Let's get open for business and let's wake up the football gods this morning as day number one of the NFL draft is now in the books. That's right. The day number one is in the books. Um, interestingly enough, after all the talk and everything else of, you know, everybody trying to make sure that nobody knows what they really want to do and so forth, the Cardinals end up taking Kyle Murley, Murray like was thought. But here's an interesting thing now. With Josh Rosen, I feel like they've almost kind of messed themselves up as far as that whole saga goes. Because the Washington Redskins, they ended up taking um, a quarterback as well as the Giants taking uh, Daniel Jones. And i got to tell you, it, it was actually pretty funny last night watching the New York stinking Giants fan. We had a ball at uh, Lucky Sports Bar and Theater um, with this. I have some problems uh, I'm still learning on the system and stuff, so it took me a while to get the stream up. But um, I've got to tweak the system and understand on going live because it's something I'm doing wrong and getting it to go automatically. It's kind of like I, I've got to, it's just a million things I've got to learn. Um, and I apologize for losing the last uh, third of the draft and stuff. But um, watching Rashid realize that his team stinks that they seem to be like a rudderless ship was actually hilarious. Um, I don't wish bad things on him, but, you know, his whole question of Daniel Jones, and um, it was funny because E2 Blue was kind of like, who? So check out that tape if you want a good laugh and stuff. Um, it, it, you know, a lot of people don't say, why do you have that guy around? Rashid's actually really good people. In fact, when we've done the tailgate, as well as the uh, draft tip trip. He actually saved the trip because we had problems with the TV. <clears throat> well, you know, I always got problems with electronics. But we had a ball there last night. So the first round is in the bag. And I don't think there were too many surprises. Um, my theory going into this and trying to pinpoint where the Cowboys could go. Now, literally, we have we're the 26th pick today, okay? So we've got 25 people that will draft before us. And following how, what my theory was, you're going to have a lot of defensive linemen, D-tackles, defensive ends, um, taken early draft because, of course, this draft is loaded with them. So you always have about 10 or 12 of those guys taken every draft. So when you look at the draft, that's in the first round. So when you look at the draft as a whole, you say, what typically will fall towards you? What groups are there not a lot of people that are usually drafted? And, of course, quarterbacks are going to be one that's a premium, and there were three taken last night, of course. Uh, number one, Murray, uh, Daniel Jones to the Giants, and um, the Redskins, of course, getting uh, Dwayne Haskins. So you knew that the quarterbacks were going to go. You always know that edge rushers, and um, are going to go because people always want those. So as we break it down, you had three quarterbacks. I, I think I missed one in here, and it's still a little early this morning. My head's a little buzzing from uh, this cold. Um, three quarterbacks, two wide receivers, two tight ends, and six offensive linemen, which is about normal. You always have offensive linemen go off the board, and about three quarterbacks is about right. On the flip side... The uh, defensive ends, you had five. You had three defensive linemen, um, four defensive tackles, and three linebackers. You, you were truly heavy on the defensive line, and that was actually a little bit more than normal because typically when I was doing just a breakdown over the last uh, eight years, you'd have anywhere from about eight to ten, and that's actually uh, 12 uh, defensive ends or defensive linemen, which is a little bit more than usual, which is good for us because there was only one safety taken, and that was uh, Jonathan Abraham and two DBs. So with that, my theory was when typically you have a lot of uh, safeties picked in the draft, it rises up and then it drops. So in the past we've had some in the top two rounds where we've had five, then the next year it's going down to like one and in some years even zero. 
Last year we had four, and the year before we had seven. So you would think that with 11 safeties taken in the first two rounds mm -hmm. over the last two seasons, that may not necessarily be a premium spot. Thus, only one was taken in the first round. That's not to say that there's not going to be a run on them the beginning of the second round. But there's still a lot of great players that are out there at other positions. And safety, I still believe, is one of those ones that teams are still looking kind of down on. So with that being said, free safety, Nazar Adderley, he's still available out there. So that's one. Taylor Rapp, he's still out there. Juan Thornhill, he's still out there. So when you're starting to look at that, there's a pretty good, pretty, pretty good chance that you should be able to get one of those guys. Um, and I'm hoping and praying that we do. Now, the Dallas Cowboys actually feel great about George Iloka. And the interesting thing about George Iloka is George has that height that the um, Cowboys love, or Chris Richard loves. Um, he's six foot four. And when you look at the Legion of Boom, um, four of the six were all like six two or taller. So they like that guy that's tall where he can deal with those bigger wide receivers that's got a little bit more mass and stuff with them. Um, so they like the way he fits in there. And currently, you look at him probably taking the lead away from um, Jeff Heath, but they'll battle it out in camp. And you've got Antoine Woods at the other safety. Um, but you want to look to get a guy who actually takes the ball away. And that's my thing. Um, as far as defensive tackles and stuff go, they're, you're not going to have the premium guys, of course, that went in the first round left. They're still going to be good players. But I'm not sure that you want to necessarily reach. The difference being is 12 defensive linemen went off the board. 12 you think are the top 12. Uh, that's not to say some of them won't play better or worse. But you only had one of the top safeties go. And I believe, like I said, I think that you'll be able to get the third best safety. We'll find out if I'm right or wrong in the formula. Now, another thing that's kind of interesting is Emmett Smith was going on and saying that he thinks that the Cowboys um, doesn't want the Cowboys to pick a running back. He feels that there's other needs on the team and that you've got the bellwether cow out there. Um, and with Zeke Elliott, who's never missed a game, he's like, you need to take those resources, put them someplace else where it'll make a bigger impact. Um, I understand that philosophy. And as long as you're looking at getting another back um, in free agency, you know, there's going to be the second wave of free agency after the draft and the final wave, which will be during training camp when teams cut down. You need to have somebody else. When you look at what happened with the Rams, that Todd Gurley ended up having arthritis in his knee. And had they not had another running back to take up the slack, I don't know that they would have had uh, the season that they ended up having. And even with that, they still went downhill without Gurley. But... Uh, more so than anything else, I think they need to have another running back in there for the fact of trying to prolong Zeke Elliott's career. You cannot keep throwing him in there 30-plus touches every single week and think that he's going to be there five, six, seven, eight years. He's just going to physically wear out. If your goal is, I'm going to get everything out of him as soon as I can and just let him go, well, okay, that's the thing. But personally... I like to see a change of pace. I like to see a smaller scat back, a third down back, a guy who can catch the ball out the backfield. Um, when you're playing football, you're a defensive lineman, and you're getting that offensive line, those big guys that are pounding on you. You know, you're taking that basically that one step, and boom, you're getting hit. And then you got a Zeke Elliott that's coming up the middle and things. One of the hardest things to do after getting used to getting pounded by that guy is now you have to go chase a guy outside and sprint. It's a backbreaker. And it's one of those things that we really didn't have. You know, we had Alfred Morris, who was our you know back that we played probably the most 
since the archaeology's been here in relief. But Alfred Morris was kind of that between the tackles running back as well. We haven't had that guy who is an outside runner. That's the dynamic pass catcher, that Duke Johnson. And maybe that's still a possibility for the Cowboys as to looking into Duke Johnson. But I'm hoping that they do something to address that. You know, in the meantime, I've got to get on the road because i got to go take care of some business. So between now and the draft, I've got about mm, 280 miles of driving to do, put up a storm door and fix a railing. So I'm going to get my butt on the road and do that. And I, of course, will see you guys sometime soon. So get back here, get the man cave back in shape. So we'll be live streaming tonight. Um, hopefully I'll get everything squared away so we don't have the issues. But I appreciate everybody who came up last night um, at Lucky's hanging out and stuff. And I appreciate everybody watching all the videos and things. I'm Mark Holmes, and I'll see you guys on the road.